these records suck! Let's find out who said so and if they were right next on Music Surgery with Dr. Bob. Welcome to Music Surgery with Dr. Bob, where we cut into all kinds of musical topics. We diagnose the problem, we remedy the problem, and we stitch it back up. So who said these records suck? Critics. Let's get out the scalpel and go to work on them. Go. Our first few patients of the day come from the most circulated rock and roll magazine of all time, Rolling Stone, and their first trashing, Abbey Road by the Beatles. Abbey Road by the Beatles contains these well-known songs. Come Together, Something, Here Comes the Sun, and I Want You, She's So Heavy. Here's what our friends at Rolling Stone had to say. What's it like? Well, I don't much like it. I've been buying their albums, playing them a couple times, and then forgetting about them. They've been shucking us a lot recently, and it's a shame because they don't have to. Surely, they must have enough talent and intelligence to do better than this. Or do they? Tune in next time and find out. Of course, the Beatles are still the Beatles, but it does tread a rather tenuous line between boredom, Beatledom, and bubblegum. Nice. Well, my friends at Rolling Stone, it turns out the public disagrees. It spent a total of 17 weeks at number one, 81 weeks on the UK charts, and it re-entered the charts in October 2019, hitting number one again. Reaction in the U.S. was similar where it spent 11 weeks at number one and in Japan was one of the longest charting albums to date, remaining in the top 100 for 298 weeks during the 70s. Wikipedia says that as of 2018, it has sold more than 31 million records. Abbey Road by the Beatles. Next up, U2's Joshua Tree. Sumner, that's the wrong cover. That's the Beatles. Get Joshua Tree up. Come on. I know you're nervous. I'm nervous too. Let's go. There you go. Okay. I know. I love you too. Here we go. Joshua Tree by U2, also reviewed by the geniuses at Rolling Stone. Some of the standout songs, Where the Streets Have No Name, I Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For, and With or Without You. The entire review of this album can be summed up in one shining moment, and here it is. Are you ready? The Joshua Tree is U2's most varied, subtle, and accessible album, although it doesn't contain any surefire smash hits. Dr. Bob, move your ass over. I gotta talk to you. I don't know who decided that U2 did not have any smash hits on this album. It was the sh**. I'm tired of this. I'm done. I don't want to hear none of this about U2 not having smash hits, and I'm out. Hey. Joshua Tree reached number one in over 20 countries, sold 10 million copies in the U.S. alone, giving it a diamond status there, and produced U2's only number one singles in the U.S., With or Without You, and I Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For. It has become one of the world's best-selling albums ever at 25 million copies. Next in line for the Firing Squad, Toto 4 by, you guessed it, Rolling Stone. Some of the standout songs on Toto 4 are Rosanna, which went to number two on the charts, and Africa, which went to number one on the charts, has gone on to worldwide phenomena in the 2000s, and even hit number one again in August 2018 by the band Weezer, 36 years after its original release. Here's what our friends at Rolling Stone had to say. This band of pros doesn't miss a trick. Toto has asserted its territorial imperative with a tune called Africa, with its artificially malleted xylophone sounds that pop up on occasion. Typical of an album that feels about as real as a Velveeta orange polyester leisure suit. Toto won six Grammy Awards for Toto 4, which went top ten in the U.S., Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the Netherlands, Italy, Norway, the U.K., and Japan. The members of Toto have played on thousands of recordings with the biggest and arguably the most important artists of all time. A short list includes... Michael Jackson, Don Henley, Pink Floyd, Miles Davis, Alice Cooper, Earth, Wind and Fire, Aretha Franklin, Elton John, Lionel Richie, Boz Skaggs, Barbara Streisand, The Tube, Steely Dan, Ringo Starr, Paul McCartney, Eric Clapton, Chicago, Stevie Nicks, Bob Seger, Rod Stewart, The Bee Gees, Dire Straits, Cheap Trick, and Bruce Springsteen. 
Hell, I don't know what meet you all the way Rosanna means. And Kilimanjaro doesn't actually rise above the Serengeti, but those stunning grooves and those blistering guitar solos, incredible layers of perfectly played keyboards and stacked vocals are nearly impossible to achieve, even now with computers, auto-tune, and beat detective. It's even rumored that Eddie Van Halen once said that collectively, Toto are the best musicians on the planet. Toto 4. And now, last but not least, Nirvana's Nevermind, reviewed by our friends across the pond at the BBC. The guitars are all crunched, phased, and compressed to within an inch of their six-string life. And the drum sounds are predictably accountant tight. Lyrically, aside from Polly, Nevermind rarely goes beyond Woe Is Me or Cryptic. Nirvana may not stand a chance of selling anywhere near as many records as Guns N' Roses, but don't tell Cobain. Well, BBC, you might have been a spot off. Let's see what happened with Nevermind. The album Nevermind changed rock and roll forever. Every other band that was successful at the time became immediately extinct, and every record label sent their people to Seattle to find the bands that were in this new genre called grunge that this album was the first to bring to the masses. Nirvana, Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, Bush, and the Smashing Pumpkins became the new normal in rock and roll, where bands like Motley Crue, Poison, Warrant, and even Van Halen were out. Nevermind has sold over 30 million copies with the Library of Congress adding it to the National Recording Registry. After the death of lead singer Kurt Cobain, accountant tight drummer Dave Grawl was asked to join Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, but respectfully turned them down to work on his own band called Foo Fighters. Doc, what do you think of all these reviews? Let's diagnose all this and see what it really means. Okay, certainly all these critics have a right to their own opinion. Do they really mean what they say? I don't know. We'll never know. Here's the thing. These are entertainment reviews by entertainment writers in entertainment publications. The more outrageous they are, the more readers they get, the more readers they get, the more money they get. And this is all about the money. But that's not really the point here. The point here is, do critics matter? Yes, critics matter a lot. But the ones that do are the trusted people in your life that you can send your work to for honest feedback. But here's the catch. If you're vulnerable enough to send them your work and they're vulnerable enough to tell you the truth about your work, you can't get mad at them. Even if they say something about your precious work that you don't like. After all, they're your friends. You trust what they say. So a couple weeks ago, I sent a song to a trusted friend for some of this feedback. And here's what he sent back. Hey Bobby, I really like this song, but your verse melody is here and your chorus melody is here. Man, you gotta rewrite that chorus melody up here so the chorus pops more. So now, in the creative stage, I can think about my friend's critique, and when I'm writing, I need to make sure that my melodies aren't in the same range, and that my chorus pops. So for me, that's how I remedy the critic thing. Better information by trusted friends makes me better at what I do. Okay, at the end of every episode, we're going to have a segment called Hidden Gems. This can be a song, record, singer, production, etc. that means a lot to us that's something that you may not know about. Sumner, roll the footage. Our first ever hidden gem is by Canadian artist Gino Vanelli, and the album is called Brother to Brother. The album was released in 1978, some of the best singing, background singing, and musicianship you will ever hear anywhere. It did have a hit that got to number four on the Hot 100 that you may know called I Just Wanna Stop. But defining Gino Vanelli by that song is like defining Lincoln as the dude on the $5 bill. If you don't have time to listen to the album in its entirety, jump to the song Brother to Brother and hang on for the next 7 minutes and 16 seconds. One side note on this album is to pay close attention to two underrated musicians, drummer Mark Craney, who's no longer with us, and guitarist Carlos Rios. Both unbelievable players and played exceptional on this album. A true hidden gem, brother to brother. Okay, that brings us to the end of our first episode. I think we've successfully examined, diagnosed, and treated the problem with critics. Nurse, stitch them up. Ew. Thank you for watching Music Surgery with Dr. Bob. Sumner, take a bow. Sumner, <laughs> Sumner, take a bow. Thank you, Sumner. I'll see you the next time the doctor's in. Na, 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 na.